This special presentation was produced in high definition by WEDU, Tampa, St. Petersburg, Sarasota. Six of us still live with our father. Nine of us have been physically reprimanded. The most unusual piece of theater, artists learning from old masters and game lovers learning the ancient tiles in this volume of a Gulf Coast Journal. This WEDU production is exclusively brought to you through a generous grant from the Gulf Coast Community Foundation of Venice, building strong communities through leadership, partnership, and endowed philanthropy. Dear Journal, and another example of a learning experience. This time, people learning a new game. Wait, that's that's really not right. This game is not new at all. With tiles racked in front of players, it may look a bit like Scrabble. Be nice to me, sweetheart. No, nope, not a chance. It plays more like Rummy. Five dot. That's what I need, but I don't have any, so I can't pick it up. But this is the ancient parlor game from China called Mahjong. It's some kind of addiction, and I, I don't really know um, how to put it. it I, it's a challenging game, but it's not uh, that challenging. Bingo! Ma no, yes, Mahjong. Mahjong is becoming popular on the Gulf Coast, rivaling cards and board games in the spirit of friendly play. When an aunt that I dearly love, my mother's only living sister, said to me, would you like my Mahjong set? I said, I'd absolutely love it because I've always wanted to play. I've been a game player. I've been a, well, I'm a bridge player. Mahjong requires strategy, calculation, and a bit of luck. Skills not all seasoned players are willing to share. The Mahjong women that I have encountered have uh, not been as embracing about teaching. Um, me how to play to include me. So I thought, well, here, here I have an opportunity to offer that to other people while sort of sneaking in myself and learning. Each Wednesday at Sarasota's Asian Arts and Decor store, owner Hannah Gibbons holds Mahjong classes for interested newbies. Well, a friend of mine told me about Asian art and uh, they were giving lessons and I wandered in and I never was so bewildered. <laughs> but somehow it took and it's become very addictive. Addictive to people from all walks of life like librarian Gail Donovan. A friend of mine um, recruited me <laughs> from my youngest daughter's first grade class. We were mothers um, who met in the classroom and she was desperate to put a game together so she said, I'm going to teach people to have a game. And that's how it began. Mahjong has different forms. In China, it is a betting game and a loud, raucous game with a poker room feel. In this country, a more stately version of the game had a kind of renaissance in the 1920s with New York as its epicenter. Generations of Jewish and Asian mothers played the game. Some passed it on to their children. Others were too busy competing. My mother, uh, who was part Japanese and was living in New York City, and this was a big part of her uh, social life, and uh, I think what she perceived to be sort of a political um, necessity. So she would disappear for evening after evening, hour upon hour, playing Mahjong, and uh, never would teach me. Oh, they must have loved you. Well, you know, you can tell already I like to make trouble. Hey, listen, you stand your own ground, that's all that counts, right? Pleasantries aside, Mahjong is no pushover parlor game. <laughs> Hold your seconds, just... When I get home from Mahjong, my husband always says, what's new in the neighborhood? I don't know. 
What would you learn? I played Mahjong. Uh, how's so-and-so? I don't know. I played Mahjong. <laughs> and it's not a bunch of women sitting around gossiping like people may think. It's really crap. No small talk, no small task in the game of Mahjong.